Hello kids. All right, I have a quick video for you today. I'm going to do a review of a PB&J Otter episode called Follow Your Nose. I did have an entire spiel about a suggestion for Disney Plus in the previous attempt at this, but I'm going to cut that short and leave that out. That will be a separate video for another day. Now, Follow Your Nose is very special for uh, two specific reasons. Okay, we'll say three, because there's actually a third one. Uh, number one, it is a 30-minute episode. Now, what do I mean when I say 30-minute episode? Most episodes of PB and J Otter are split into, uh, still 30 minutes, but they're split into two stories, like Peanut Saves the Day and Jelly Jumps for Joy. Those aren't actual episode titles. Uh, I think P Peanut Saves the Day is an actual episode title, I think. But I might be remembering wrong. But that's just an example. Well, this one is special because Follow Your Nose is an actual individual story. It's a 30-minute story, and it's actually great. Now, I'm about to show you something uh, in a few minutes. And I should give you some context before I show you the thing. So, Peanut Butter and Jelly go on a picnic that their mom packs them, and then they run into Flick. Flick smells the babbleberry pie that they have and decides, hey, I want to be part of the picnic too. So they get ready to join the picnic and Flick starts scaring them because they find the door and they ask about the door and they say, what's the door for? And it's like, moles, don't you know? They're undergrounders. And he starts scaring them about the moles and saying that the moles are dangerous and blah, 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 blah. So usual Flick tactics to scare them so that he can take their pie. Because he's Flick. I hate Flick. So does Mama Puzzle Skunk. Flick is a terrible character. Uh, for a whole host of reasons. But we won't get into that today. So Flick tries to get their pie. As usual. And it fails. But then one of the... Meanwhile, there are a bunch of moles. These moles are, as you would expect... Well, they're moles. Moles, if you don't know, moles live underground, and they are basically blind. Okay, so like they have very bad eyesight. Now, I'm about to show you something. I should point this out too. Your friendly neighborhood puzzled skunk is considered legally blind. Your friendly neighborhood puzzled skunk can see out of her right eye, but can't see shit out of her left eye. Her right eye compensates and has, um, I, so I have depth perception issues which means I cannot go downstairs easily. So what it might take me, say, 10 minutes, like, say, 5 minutes to get upstairs, but it takes me 10 minutes to get downstairs. I take 5 extra minutes going down the stairs because I can't see on the one side, so going down is more dangerous for me because I have to make sure I'm not, I don't slip because I have done that before. <sighs> anyway, so... Uh, there's a couple of things that your friendly neighborhood puzzle skunk uses. One of the two things I don't technically need, but I got as a blind person in for my own safety and in case I go somewhere big. So, not like my local mall because I know my way around my local mall easily. But, for example, if I were to go into an airport, I have used this thing twice. Twice in my life. Uh, since I've gotten it. Once when I was walking in a strip mall that I know like the back of my hand, but uh, it was I was going when people were going to be driving like crazy idiots and I didn't want to be unsafe. And the only other time I used it was when I went to go get my first ever COVID vaccine, the first dose. Uh, I brought it with me and used it then because your friendly neighborhood puzzle skunk has anxiety when it comes to doctors doctor's offices of any type. This includes regular doctors, uh, dentists, any kind of doctor. Although I will admit though that uh, it's not as scary as optometrists. Optometrists? Yeah. Uh, eye doctors, they don't bother me as much. Other ones do. But that's another story for another day. So, and of course, Grandma Puzzle I told Grandma Puzzle Skunk about it and she laughed. Uh, she's like, that's not good. Don't do that. It's like, don't do that. Now, I have to admit, do not, uh, point, uh, disclaimer, do not 
abuse the system and do not play uh, pretend to be more disabled than you are unless you need to so uh, and I don't mean like oh I need to cut the line no I'm referring to situations like in my case where I went uh, to the doctor and I have anxiety and I don't like to talk to people in the doctor's office I'm not good at talking to people when it comes to doctors or government office stuff so like if I'm in a government situation and mama punk skunk is there I just tell her you say everything and then unless they say I have to say something because technically I'm over 18 so uh, the uh, US legal system is really ridiculous and stupid and they make over 18s say shit and actually say that the parents can still say shit when it should be the parents automatically can still say shit forever and ever and always if the person is disabled uh, is considered disabled because uh, 18 or not if you're disabled your parent or guardian that you live with should be the one saying things for you instead of you saying it for yourself personally that's just that's just that's just my opinion it's a stupid opinion potentially but the reason I think that is just simply because for some of us we don't like talking to certain people because it makes us uncomfortable like in my case I don't like talking to government agents because they make me uncomfortable and so do doctors so I've used this little tool this is the second tool that I have uh, at the doctor's office and I had it and I used it so that I didn't have to say anything because they saw the thing I'm going to show you and they realized, oh, Puzzle Skunk is blind. Let's lead her exactly where she needs to go and she'll get help so she can get taken care of. That's the, And I didn't have to do it the second time. Because I understood where I was going. I knew what was going on and I felt comfortable. Now, the reason I bring all this up is because this is a... They use this tool in the episode Follow Your Nose. So, this the there are a bunch of moles and the moles are blind. Now... You're going to be hearing some clicking, but first, this, and your uh, friendly neighborhood Iron Zebra has seen this as well, is your friendly neighborhood Puzzle Skunk's white cane. Now, this I got through the NFB, and I, like I said, I've used it mm, t twice since I've had it. Okay, three times. But one other time, uh, and I used it during my uh, my prior America's Got Talent audition uh, simply because I was showing that I showing my a visual, re visual representation of my disability because blindness is something that is not always obvious on some people and since you know you can't just say oh I can't see out of one eye that's not really an obvious so I use the cane to make it obvious that I'm disabled Specifically so that when I told them those things, they could see it and go, oh, okay. And so I've used it three times in my existence of having this. Uh, so I will um, explain real quick. So the moles have it and they use it to get around. They also have their shades and it's so cute. So baby butter makes friends with the baby mole and um, yeah, so they all, they end up uh, eventually becoming friends and they had this one instance where flick peanut no yeah flick peanut and we're gonna call him baseball cap mole because i forget what his name is already because i just finished the episode a little a while ago but uh baseball cap mole find out that they all love bucky beaver who's like the space commando something in the world of peanut uh, pb and j order and they all three of them love bucky Bucky Beaver and so he's like wait how do you read Bucky Beaver and he shows him this braille edition of what amounts to a comic book and then it just was like okay why don't we have a braille edition of Daredevil somebody okay Marvel get on that please somebody make a braille edition of one at least one Daredevil story because it would be poignant and for those of you who don't know <laughs> it well you know and the reason I'm gonna uh, so the reason I was showing you the cane is they use these to get around but also Flick scares them by saying they use these sticks as weapons now unless you're Matt Murdock this thing is not a weapon this is a weight cane I'm going to show y'all as y'all hear the clicks 
and watch. Oh, wait. Okay, let me, I don't know if it's going to show up on camera. So I have it bent, and now it's up. Now, I can't show you all what it looks like fu fully. There it is. So, that's what it looks like all the way up. And then, what you would do as a blind person is swipe. There's different swipes. I don't know all the swipes. Because, again, I don't use this very often. Uh, but there's different swipes you can use. You can tap. Here, y'all listen a minute. So, there's the swiping motion. There's the... Which is tapping... And then there's other ways to do it too, but uh, those are the two that I know of. So, uh, the moles use that. Click tells them, hey, it's a weapon. They use it, you know, because they know martial arts and they can use it to hit people. In fact, nunchucks, no, it's not. <laughs> um, and I'll show you really quickly here. The tip, I have a pencil, what's called a pencil tip on mine. Mine, as you see, it has a little bit of wear, but not much because, again, I have not used this very often. And then also we have the red part, which alerts people, hey, blind person walking, because it makes it more visible. Now, y'all might be wondering, but Puzzle Skunk, why would you get that if you don't need it? Well, one of the things I did a few years ago that was part of my New Year's resolution was get um, make an attempt at accessing services that I qualify for um, to benefit me in the long run so like the book player that benefits me in the long run because I'm able to listen to books on it but also if I want to learn something I can use it to learn something and not just that also this benefits me a little bit better as well because now I have access to books a still physical form of book in case I heaven forbid lose my good eye which is also why I got the cane the cane and y'all are going to be hearing some more clicking uh, because I am putting it up. And y'all have to look at the ceiling a minute. I'm sorry. The cane is in case I, heaven forbid, lose my good eye. And I will show y'all how to shut it really quick. Heaven forbid I lose my good eye. I do have an immediate form of response. So that... Alright, so you... So that I don't have to worry about it right away. I don't have to go, Ag, I've lost my good eye. Eep, help. So, I mean, I'll have to learn assistive technology immediately. But at the very least, I don't have to immediately, you know, like, be... I won't be as afraid of that kind of situ situation. Because I'll have at least something that I already know how to sort of use. I have basic, the basic ability to mostly use this. I know how to use, I have no official O&M training. I don't have, I don't have official mobility training with this, with my white cane. I know how to use it because I pay attention to things. I've learned from watching my completely blind friends that do use it um, to get around. As well, I've paid attention to, I've learned it from watching a few YouTube videos about the subject and Molly Burke. Yeah, I admit it, Molly Burke. Yes. Uh, and no, I know that's no substitute for official O&M, like, training. I don't know if you actually have to legally have that. I'm not sure. Now, if I did go completely blind, yes, I would totally get some. But with the, uh, but, um, all that to say, uh, they use those to get around and they make... Men, you know, mention of Braille. They make mention of using the white canes to get around. They get help Jelly get over her fear of the dark, and they show her the show her and the others. Hey, you can get around by sniffing things. Now, that's the other cool, unusual tactic. Here's number three. They actually worked with the American Foundation for the Blind, as well as another organiz a couple of other organizations. So they actually got all the stuff accurate. I like, I have a love-hate relationship with special needs episodes. 
because like there was one episode where Flick had to get glasses so he could read but then they never make mention of him needing glasses ever again like don't I hate when they do that if you're gonna add something to the character make it a permanent addition and not a temporary addition just for the episode but um we're not here to talk about that because that that will go in the Flick episode the Flick video because but yeah so uh I don't normally, I really don't like special needs episodes. Now, special needs episodes, for the episode, uh, or a coin, term I'm coining, referring to episodes that pertain to special needs, excuse me, that pertain to special needs individuals that either show up one time, like in the case of the moles, in this particular case, or uh, characters that, or relegated to background characters or they might show up from time to time but not very often so i will give you some prime examples here um mina uh, i forget what her name is melina or mina i forget what her name is exactly we're going to call her mina because i could be or melina i think it is uh melina from arthur her episodes those are special needs episodes uh, when George met Carl, that's another special needs episode. However, that actually is the one of the few exceptions, because I make exceptions for uh, special needs episodes that involve a little bit involving autism, because kind of biased here. <laughs> like the Molina, the the Molina episode. The only reason that one doesn't get an exemption, even though I'm technically legally blind and have visual impairment myself, is because. Uh, I never really connected 100% with the blind special needs episodes because like, I'm not that level of blindness, so I never connected fully. Oh, also, sidetrack really quick. Ow. Okay, if I can show y'all how to do this one-handed. Oh, I don't think I can. Okay, wait, yes I can. Okay, oh, shit. So, I do that. And now it's shut. Okay. So, like, there's the Molina episode. There's when Carl met... When George met Carl, which is the autism episode. The, um, episode Meet Julia from, on Sesame Street. Um, that new, uh, Thomas and Friends All Engines Go episode with the brake car. Okay, he's adorable. That's a separate video by itself. But yes. Um... And the, uh, oh, the episode, okay, the, uh, Craig of the Creek episode where they meet the, uh, where they meet the deaf kid, which I cannot remember that character's name, the Bluey episode of the same, of the same bunch, the deaf kid, the episode with, I think her name is Lyra, Lyra, I think, or Lyca, I can't remember, I'm just gonna call her Lyca, it's another, uh, Arthur episode, this time the girl is in a wheelchair, there's also the episode of, okay, th there's a bunch, as y'all see. So the so I call them special needs episodes because usually the character either never shows up again, like in some cases, which that really pisses me off. Please don't make an episode drawing attention to a special need and not make them a main character, or at the very least, a recurring side character. Because at least with Carl, he shows up again from time to time. At least with me, Melina, she shows up from time again from time to time. But don't add police companies. Stop making episodes with special needs characters that never show up again. Don't and don't collaborate with other organizations just to make side characters for one singular episode. That pisses me off. It makes me happy that they're acknowledging us. But it pisses me off when they're only in one episode because then the point is, why would you go through all the trouble of talking to the Blind Foundation and getting all this accurate information if you're only going to have the mole show up once? Like, please, it's just, mm, it's offensive. I find it more offensive because then it's like, what, we only get one singular episode of acknowledgement? Because like I said, at least with Carl and Melina, they show up again. In a few other episodes, Melina more so than Carl, but like in the case of Carl, see, Car I get Carl not showing up as much because the thing with autism is you have to be very careful. If you've met one person with autism, you've met one person with autism. 
you have to be careful with autism because if you're not, you could cause problems. And also, autism is a touchy subject and some people get offended by a, the acknowledgement of autism's existence. So, them not using Carl or Julia as often, I get that. They, they want to use them, but they have to be careful in how they use them, when they use them, you know, and whatnot. Speaking of which, this is kind of a sidetrack, and I'm sorry, but I, in the in the last episode of Arthur, they show what all, a lot of the characters were doing as adults. I want to see what Carl ended up being as an adult. Something tells me he ran the train, was a train conductor. I want him to be a train conductor. Okay, from now on, Carl's a train conductor. <laughs> which, I mean, it's kind of silly, but we're going to say that. I want to. But yeah, so if you have not seen that episode of PB&J, please take the time to watch the episode. It's really great. It's really well written. I don't think the moles ever come back, which is kind of sad. And and like I said, it pisses me off when they do stuff like that because it's like, we're not good enough for the rest of the series. We're only good for one episode. Yeah, no. Now, if the, if the character has a disability that is hard to portray correctly, that's different. Because, like, if you were doing, like, Laika, we're going to, like I said, the wheelchair kid, that's different. That one is kind of a thing where you have to be careful. Or, like, Carl. Autism you have to be careful with. It's hard to portray it because you might accidentally portray a stereotype that you're not meaning to. Like in the case of Julia. She does have lots of stereotype in her, but it's not intentional. It's because some of the, they just were trying to show a little of everything. So, like, if the, but blindness is something that's easy to portray. You just have them, like, blindness isn't something where it's like, you have to hide it somewhere. You know, you don't have to, like, cover it up. Blindness is something you can make really obvious, real quick, real easy. Just have them walking around with their white cane, moving around pretty easily enough. You know, even if you have them just do that, and actually, you know, every so often have the character explaining why they use the cane, or, like, like, you know, more acknowledgement. Just not... It was a great episode. Don't get me wrong. I just wish they would do... Shows would actually make the effort to have more special needs characters as main characters. And when they aren't the main character, make them more uh, more of a recurring side character as opposed to a one-off character that either shows up in maybe one to two episodes. Please don't do that, companies. You're better than that. You can do better than that. And with that... Um, I'm going to go. Uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Uh, there will be a video, as I said, talking about why Flick is a terrible character. Uh, and my suggestion for Disney Plus about Playhouse Disney. Because I realize that needs to be its own thing. Because that's actually going to take a while. And same thing with the Flick video. But the Flick video might actually not take as long. I don't know. It depends on how much I have to yell about how bad Flick is. Because Flick is terrible. If you've seen PB&J, you'd understand exactly how terrible and why I think he's that terrible. So I will see you guys in the next video. Um, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I hope to see you guys next time. Bye-bye.